privilege today to be joined by Rabbi Dweck. Rabbi Dweck needs little to no introduction, um, but I'm going to give him a short one anyway. Uh, I understand this is the first in person for the year, but right, so very grateful for being invited to take part. Um, so I understand that usually it's about Parsha, so I thought that perhaps we should look a bit at the Parshiot, if that's okay, that's what I was told. Um, and we're, we're the social contract is 30 minutes, is that right about that? Okay, good, good. So... So really one thought that I wanted to share on the parasha that um, I find to be extremely central to my own uh, yadut and avodah and relationship to Akadosh Baruch and of course to the nature of the breed itself. It's important to know, you know, we're closing the book of Aikra this week with the reading of Behar Mekudah. And it's also important to re remember that the entirety of the Sefer Vayikra occurs on one day, right, which is unique because the rest of the Torah doesn't run. The other books don't run. But all of Sefer Vayikra essentially is on one day. It's the Yom Shmini, It's the eighth day after Shiva Yom the day that Nadav and Avihu dies, the day of the consecration of the Mishkan, the beginning of the Amudah. And all of this is occurring at Har Sinai. Right? We're still there. We haven't left Har Sinai. All of this is happening after the consecrate, the, the establishment of the Mishkan. And it's next week that there's liftoff, right? We start to get on our way. So before we close, there is a, of course, there is a breed that's established at Har, at Har Sinai between Akadosh Baruch Hu and Israel. It's a bilateral breed, right? Where Akadosh Baruch Hu basically offers this to Ben Israel. Ben Israel says, Naseh. After Mishpat, they hear the Mishpatim, Nasev and Nishma. Moshe Rabbeinu takes buckets of blood, throws it on the people, and all that. serious, serious stuff. Literally, we sign this breed in blood. So, in these closing parashiyot, there is a closing out of the breed with a discussion about adherence. There are terms, and there are there are perks and penalties. And that's essentially what it is that we read in these, in these parashiyot this week. Specifically with regards to Rechukotai, although of course they're interconnected, Behar and Rechukotai. And it's a bit scary, to be honest. It's, you know, Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't pull any punches over here. He makes it very clear from the very beginning what this is going to look like. And it's... Uh, Unfortunately, and I always think about it this way, we are looking at this retrospectively. We've seen all of this stuff happen already, which is quite, you know, disheartening, uncomfortable, sad, painful, uh, sober, perhaps. You can imagine that when they were hearing this, they could only imagine what this might mean. But it was all spoken, all at the very beginning, signed in blood. So that's a frame for what it is that we're reading over here. I want to delve into one point, a point that recurs throughout the Tochecha. There's a word that recurs throughout the Tochecha. This one specifically, right? right? You know there's a Tochecha later on in Kitab. Oh, it's a different issue. Completely different, but it's, it's its own thing. But here, while we're still at Sinai, before we've even begun a journey into the Arabs, there is this establishment of im and im lo, if you don't. And the if you don't, 
fills a great deal of Berchukotai, and there's a word that keeps coming up over and over and over again, and you know which word that might be. Yes? The rabbi doesn't get this one. Yes, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Which means what? What is it? What's the root of the word? Casual happenstance. Yeah. What's the root of the word in Hebrew? Kufresh he, which is like everyday language, makara, right? Makara is not with an other. Makara is with a he. Very, very different word, although they're related. I mean, literally, the entire story of Bilam and Moshe is in these words. Yeah? But that's another shiur. It's not for now. You can extrapolate from this one to that. So, I mean, it's every day, it's every day. Makara, what happened? And that's what it is. It's a happening. It's a happening that doesn't seem to have any specific meaning, direction, it has an element of randomness to it. Indeed, we will say something that randomly happened is a mikre. And so carry, if we're talking about happenings, happenstance, randomness, these kinds of things, carry in these sukim over here is talking about what? I mean, let's read it. Read a little bit. See yeah, how this is used over and over and over and over. In bezod lo tishemuli, v'alachtem imi bekeli. Don't listen to me. And you walk with me in keli. It's over again. And it says a whole bunch of things that are going to happen. And it's repeated. And repeat it. And we do it on our We do it on our own. We don't have to speak out what it is that they did against me. We have Especially that they went with me bekeri. I'll do the same thing. You want to walk with me bekeri? I'll walk with you bekeri. And that's repeated. So what does it say? What is it? What would you say? This this is saying here, right? We know what the word essentially means. Kadosh Baruch Hu is saying, you know, if you do this to me, you walk with me this way. This way, I'm going to walk with you. Which is interesting in and of itself. So what does it say? What does it mean to walk in carry? I'm asking you. It doesn't have to be accurate. What do you think? You you you've heard the adaptation. What do you think it means? Pshat, what's the pshat meaning to you? What is the simple meaning to you? If you're reading this, knowing what you know the word means, its roots, what does it mean? To walk with God to carry. Anyone? Thank you. Without attributing things to God. Say again? Without attributing things to God. Without attributing things to God? It's interesting. What is things? Consequences to your actions. This is what happens when mass happens. Did you say something? It was you talking. Yeah, it was <laughs> that was interesting. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. So say it again, Jack. Um, so if, if you do something and then there's a consequence to that, and instead of saying that consequence is from God, you say this is just random. Okay. There's an element of that. But what does it mean? It's not, not true. If I walk with somebody that I have a relationship, right? We're talking about covenant over here. We're talking about pact, relationship, connection, agreement. This is between you and me. Kerry would seem to be the antithesis of that, right? Because this is extremely focused, is it not? You know that I know that you know that I know what we're doing. It's all been clear. We spent a year at the foot of this mountain delineating all of these issues. I threw blood on you, right? You had blood showers to be able to clarify that this is what's going on. This is an endeavor between God and Israel. Started with your grandfather, Abraham. It is manifesting now in you as a nation. It was open to you. You accepted it. We are going through now the future together. All thus. So we know what our goals are. 
We know what our purpose is. We know what our values are. I mean, this is, you know, this is existential angst of every single individual today in the 21st century. What was my purpose? What am I going to do? Which is a very important question. It's not a small question. People really can't get around this problem. As they should have problems getting around it because it's very difficult to live a life when one has not had a clear or does not have a clear purpose, focus, meaning to one's life. So here for this inyan, right, for this situation, Kadosh Baruch Hu and B'nai Israel are pretty clear on what's going on. So what Kadosh Baruch Hu says, listen, before we get out of here, when we start the, the walk, the derech, I just want to make it clear, right? If you start to engage in this as though it's arbitrary, as though it's a random kind of thing in your life, it's not the central defining element of your life, I will do the same. So it's not saying, it's not saying, you know, I'm going to just punish you. What it's saying is the nature of punishment or the nature of response will be in kind. But it's specifically about caring because the whole nature of the breed is anti-caring. The whole nature of the breed is this is not just some way that I'm randomly living my life. This is, this is your life. It's the nature of who you are and who I am as far as I'm reading if God's talking, who I am as far as my relationship to you in your life. I mean, yes, I know I'm God, creator of the heaven and earth, but more often and more importantly to you, I'm God who took you out of its right. That's, that's my personal relationship with you, and that's how I will run with you. And that's important because it's not just cosmic. Cosmic is becoming very personal. So this is personal, it is meaningful, it is focused. If that starts to break down, which is what Kelly means over and over again in Parashah, if that starts to break down and you start to relate to this entire endeavor as some arbitrary thing on the side, I will do the same. I will revert back to cosmic God and relate to this act as though it's an arbitrary thing on the side, which means I'm going to take my hand off the wheel. I'm not going to look at the road. I'm not really going to be focusing on you as my goal and endeavor. Now, of course, there's a little bit cheeky, right? With the greatest of respect. Because for Hakadosh Baruch Hu to say that is for him to say, I do care very much. Because I care about what you do, I'm going to respond to what you do. You get that? You understand that part? That's an important part. Because it's not just Hakadosh Baruch Hu saying, okay, I'm done. It's Hakadosh Baruch Hu saying, because I'm paying attention to you. And I'm watching the fact that you're acting this way. I'm going to act the way that you act while I'm watching you act inside of my eyes to see how things are going. So the whole time I will be keeping away from being personally involved, but I'm going to be watching about what's going on because I'm personally involved. You follow? So there's a whole intimacy involved in this, even in the carry. Right? It's where Akadosh Baruch Hu is saying, I'm not going to just leave this alone. I am going to respond. I'm not just cutting the ties. Because what we know about the nature of the breed, and this is very important, is that it's unconditional. People make, it, you know, make, it, make a mistake. The breed is not conditional. It cannot be abrogated. Ever. There is nothing that neither God nor Israel can do to abrogate the breed. That's part of what the nature of the breed is. There can be punishment, for not following the breed. There can be anger, upset, indifference, silence, but the breed itself can never be abrogated. How do we know that? How do we see that manifest in our law? The breed can never be abrogated, and therefore, a Jew can never stop being a Jew. No matter how much he or she tries, we will never, ever stop thinking of that person as a Jew. I'm going to take, I'm going to bracket over here because I think this is very, very important for that for us to understand what, what we're talking about over here. People, because of the intensity and severity of the response of not dealing with Brit appropriately, 
people misunderstand that to mean that HaKadosh Baruch Hu no longer is interested in Bria. That is not true. The very fact that he's responding to Keri with you, who's walking a Keri, is only because of the Bria. Nothing else. If he wasn't bound to the Bria, he would say, okay, you know, you go your way, I'll go my way, and we'll call it a day. You know, it was a nice experiment. Uh, they would go. Why do I have to respond to you? I will let you. If things go, things go well for you, things go well for you. Things go well for you. No, here he's saying, no, it's going to feel for you like I am not looking. The world will feel to you as though I don't care. You don't care. And if you don't care, I'm going to pretend that I don't care because you're going to pretend that you don't care and I'll pretend that I don't care. And we're all both going to realize that we're going to be watching Quran and I to see what it is God's doing and what is the Israel is doing. But it's not a severing. Why? Because the breed can never be abrogated. There is nothing you can do to fall out of the breed. I mean you, personally, right? As a Jewish person, there's nothing that you can do to, to step out of the breed. You can pretend that it's not there. But you never are no longer part of it. It's not up to you. And we know that because if you are a Jewish person, either that you converted appropriately or you were born a Jewish person, no matter what your beliefs are, no matter how much attention you pay to the breed, actively, if you want to marry another member of the people, there's nothing that you really have. I mean, if the person, you have two kosher witnesses, and you do the kiddushin appropriately, the kiddushin are tofsi. Read it. It's kiddushin. You'll need a get. You'll have to go to bed. It's, it's, there's nothing you can do. Try that with a person who's not a member of Israel. It's not kiddushin are tofsi. There's other questions as to how it is that we treat you. All right, okay, that's a different question, right? You know, if you're part of the family, you're causing problems for the family. The family may choose not to talk to you or not to invite you to dinner or whatever the case may be. But you're never not part of the family. I mean, you're the family. So that cannot change. There's nothing that one can do in order to be able to change. So what the Lord Baruch Hu is saying over here is, this is the way we will run if you act as though it's not an important thing. I will act. As though it's not an important thing. All of the underlying thing will be, of course, is very important because it cannot be abrogated. And we're both in this for all time. And that's why at the end it says, Ah, Gamzot, you with all of this, everything we're saying, all of the harrowing craziness that this parasha deals with, when they're in the middle of the land of their enemies, I will never reject them to the point of wiping them out. To abrogate my covenant with that will never happen. Which basically debases the entirety of Christianity, but nonetheless. It's right there. Why can't he have the Because I'm their God. And that will never change. I could be upset with them, I could treat them haphazardly, when they treat me haphazardly, but that's between us. This never changes. Oh, and I will remember the original breed. They're now gleam in the eyes of all the other nations. That never changes. So then how am I with time? I don't have a time. Well, I sit there. All right. Should I start on time? Okay. So we'll close out this way. Because I don't want, I don't want to close out this way. So what is this carry? So it is walking in a lack of care, a lack of value, meaning, with regards to the breed. But it's a bit deeper than that. What is the nature of that recognition and care? The nature of the recognition and care is that we genuinely are walking through this world with God. And what that means is, is that our lives are imbued with God. What that means is, is that the world is not dead. It's alive. 
The world is not indifferent to us. It's responsive. Why? Because the soul of the world that we call HaKadosh Baruch Hu, runs through it and has special attention to it. And that is a core element of what living with the care and attention means. Because the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu engages with us, ideally, ideally, is not prophets. The way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu ideally engages with us is through the world that he created the nature of our lives. We can feel our lives overall. And this has nothing to do with good or bad things that happen to us per se. It has to do with how we experience the, ex the events of our lives. Do we experience the events of our lives as though there is a world talking to us? The world responding to us? The world that is alive around us? Or do we experience our lives as though we are walking through an indifferent, dead world. And that we just happen to be running through. And that everything that occurs in it just happens. That's the difference. Israel, as a whole nation, never walks through this world as though it's just a dead world that is indifferent to us and we just happen to be walking through. We live through this world as though the world is working with us. And when I say as though, I mean genuinely, we believe that that's what's happening. Why do we believe that that's what's happening? Because we understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the soul of the world. And that it is alive. And it is responsive. And I don't mean that in a superstitious way. It's important to understand. It's not like you go about your life and all of a sudden you get a parking spot and God is with you. It is the defining nature of our life. It's not just the parking spot. It's the whole of the way that we engage with the world, how we relate to the world. Do we relate to the world as though God is in it? Manifest through it? Walking with me as I run through it? Or do we relate to the world as though, you know, I just happen to be running along a biped on an arbitrary planet? In the middle of nowhere, which it can very well be. I mean, it's very easy for it to become that. So the Rambam is posseic. The following. In the beginning of the Chotani. He says it very well. He says, look, it's something that we have, it's so important for the people of Israel not to fall into that problem. Meaning what? Not to fall into living a life as though they experience the world as completely arbitrary. Rather than a world that is alive and powered by God and responsive. It's so important that if it begins to occur, we need to sound alarms in order to wake people back up to the reality of the world. So he writes at the beginning of the Chotanit, Mitzvah Asemi Na Torah. These are all the Hariya Bahatzotrot. There's a Mitzvah from the Torah to blow trumpets. Al Kol Tzarash Tavah and Tzibura on any hardships that occur to the people. This is a national Mitzvah, which means that when we are sovereign in our land with a Supreme Court and a judicial system, a legislative system. A governmental system, this is what must be done when hardships befall the Jewish people. You have to sound the alarm. When bad things start happening, sound the trumpets. Kromar says the Rambam. That means, in other words, to say, anything that causes you sara, distress, oppression, restriction, anything that is restricting your lives. You should feel that as the walls of life coming in, pushing on you, to prod you. That's the ideal, right? Kegon batzoret v'dever v'arbe, there's all kinds of plagues. Hayotzeh bahem za'ku alehem v'hariu, sound the alarm. At the first inkling of that happening. V'davar zeh midarke tshuva, says this is among the pathways to Teshuvah. 
In Hilchot Teshuvah, the Rambam says, Mi Teshuvah, among the pathways of Teshuvah, such and such. This is one of them. To wake up, sound alarms. When things start getting tough, the going gets tough. The people should know that it's because they're missing the mark on the way that they're living as a nation. And this is a national mitzvah. And so when they sound the alarms, they'll be able to come to a better understanding, a clarity to return to. And it says, if this is disregarded, if it isn't recognized as a meaningful experience of stimulus and response, it'll get worse. How do we know that? Because it says that if you experience this, first of all, it's derech achzariyut, which literally means what? What is achzar in my view? It's mean. Vicious. What does that have to do with it? How is not feeling the world or responding to the world achzar? Mean. Mean spirited. Who's doing anything wrong to anybody? So, as Hazal say, the word achzar means that a person has no empathy. That's really what achzar means. Why? Because to that person, everything is zar. Zar means what? It's just strange. It's foreign. Ah, zah. It is only foreign. If it's not me and what I want, what I'm doing, anything outside of me is foreign. So if I can't relate to anything, I don't have empathy for anything, and I don't treat anything with any type of compassion. Because the only sense of compassion and empathy I have is with me experiencing what it might be for me to go through what this person is going through. That's how all of our empathy is. That's why a psychopath who has no empathy has to pretend because he has no sense of what it is that the person is going through. Because they don't have the capacity to have any of the mirror neurons that are necessary to be able to feel what it is. So why is it saying that? Because if the world is speaking to you, if the world is responding to your life, feel it and respond. And if you need a trumpet to bring you to that awareness, then by all means. But if not, there is a hardened element that is happening in a lack of response. And that is why it says in the Pasuk, If you walk with me haphazardly, unresponsively, as though everything is a random event having nothing to do with you, well then by all means, the world will have nothing to do with you. Of course, the word for cold is in that core root. Because you believe that the world is a cold place. There is no warmth. There is no care or concern. Like I said, even the response is care. Because it's like a and because I care, I'm going to respond to you, mirror your actions, in hopes that that itself will call your attention to the fact that the world isn't working for you. And it is appropriate to ask, if the world is not working for me right now, what might I need to do? Now, it is true that this is national and not necessarily individual. But there are individual implications that come out of it. Because each and every single one of us, being a member of Israel, and therefore, members of the breed can choose to live within that breed, and build our lives with it, and recognize that God is not just the first cause or the primal mover, as the Greek philosophers suggested, which implies that God begins things but stays out of them. Instead, what we recognize is that Kadosh Baruch Hu is Mamtsi Kodim Tzad, the Rambam says in this. It is an active, present, engaging, powering of the world and all that exists. That's why I say it's the soul of the world. When we live that way, when we live our lives that way, when we feel the throbbing life that runs through this world, this universe, our planet, 
we feel the ebb and flow of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence in our lives. And so what we want, and I'm going to close with this, what we want is to be able to have textbook answers. And even in this situation that I just read, you need to sound the alarms. And you have to realize that this is not happening since. Later on in the Halachot, it says, and you know what has to happen? Then the, the Chachamim have to sit and take days in fasting to contemplate what it is that is the issue. Beware not responding to symptoms. Don't respond to symptoms. Respond to problems. Causes. Because what we tend to do is respond to symptoms rather than causes. In other words, what's going on? Let me fix what's going on. Let me not see what it is it's causing. Us. So this is not, now that's why I say it's not superstitious. Superstition is such and such is happening, do such and such, adjust. This is not a superstitious thing. This is a way of life. It's a constant questioning of my thought, my relationships, my interaction with the world. What might need correcting? What might I learn? How might I grow? You see the difference between that thinking, that life, and a life saying, okay, if I say this chapter of Tehillim, everything will be okay. Or if I, I fast this amount of hours, everything will be okay. You understand the difference? You hear the difference. There is a massive difference between it. I'm not saying that Tehillim shouldn't be said. I'm saying that it should be part of an examination of a life. That you should know what you're saying when you say it. It's not a recital or an incantation. That you say the words of David HaMelech with concentration, with awareness of what it is that you're saying and why. That you're speaking to God using the words of a poet king. As the Rambam writes, Lev Melech, Lev Kol Yisrael. The heart of a king is the heart of all of Israel. So he uses words. You hear the difference between opening and saying a chapter of Tehillim for something or being conscious and responsive to a life and saying, what might I need to learn? What might be missing? And so there are very practical things that we can do. Modern things that we can do. The first is to examine regularly. Journal. Sounds new way, I know it's as old as time. I mean, it saved us in Purim, didn't it? It's a good thing the king journaled. Journal. It's just one, one thing that you... Why? Why journal? Why? Because when you start having a relationship with your own mind, and your own feelings, you begin to allow yourself to talk to yourself. We feel uncomfortable talking to ourselves. But it's absolutely essential to talk to yourself. Because you begin to have a relationship with you. You think about your life. You examine your life from the outside. That's what the chatzots are for. That's what the trumpets are for. The trumpets are only for wake up and think about what's going on. And respond. Adjust. And that's the meaning of ashrei adam mefached tamid. A person who's always afraid. What does it mean always afraid? It doesn't mean that you're worried that everything, every moment something bad is going to happen. Afraid means... You're not complacent. You recognize when things are going well and you're grateful. And you're aware of that. And you say, And when you need help, you ask for it. And you ask, Help me understand. Let me see. It is a life of consciousness. It is a life of purpose. It is a life of meaning. It is a life where even when we are in that and we fall or we go silent or we doze for a while, we nonetheless know what the ultimate course is. And it's okay. As long as we recognize what the ultimate corpus of our lives is. And that is brief and focus as opposed to carry and indifference. Shabbat shalom.